Hey, blessings everybody. I've got some more insanity to show you. Friends, family, people who enjoy my videos, welcome back to another one. Today we're going to be talking about the closing ceremony of the Olympics. If you didn't catch it, well, I'm going to break it to you. It was pure evil and I'm going to show you some of the clips from it in a moment. I'm talking about headless angels, disgusting creepy symbolism and straight up demonic vibes. That's exactly what this was. And you need to hear this because what went down in that ceremony wasn't just art. It was a disturbing display and even secular people have come out and said, what was that? What is even going on here? So it's got a lot of people asking questions and that's what we're going to dive into in this video in depth. <laughs> So what exactly is going on here? Let's get straight to the point. Now, a lot of people are going to think this is stretching because they don't have spiritual discernment, but it is what it is. I'm not here to people, please. These are the facts. This right here is a headless angel at the closing ceremony of the Olympic Games. Now, we know that angels represent messengers of Yahweh. For those of you who don't know, Yahweh is the true God. He is the God spoken about in the Bible. Go and read the Old Testament. You will see his name is there many times, over 6,000 times. Go straight to the book of Psalm 68.4 and you can see it for yourself. Anyways, so the absence of a head on an angel shows the disconnect from the divine authority. This is ultimate blasphemy right here. By beheading an angel, decapitating an angel, what they are ultimately saying is they have severed the connection between the messengers of Yahweh and mankind. This is what's being said here. Now, not only this, there's a very dark, creepy, ominous vibe to the entire ceremony, but they mix this in with some upbeat singers to cause people to basically go up and down in their emotional state. This is a form of control. It's a form of mind control. And the entire ceremony was set against a dark, almost apocalyptic backdrop. The music, lighting, choreography, all combined create an unsettling, eerie, wicked vibe, but only for those who have discernment. Other people will be taken away with the entertainment. Take a look into the etymology of that word in your own time. Now, this wasn't your typical celebration. It was something far more sinister. And this becomes abundantly clear when you look at the blatant symbolism. Not to even talk about the amount of times they cut athletes off who were trying to promote Jesus Christ, who were speaking about Jesus Christ. But when somebody tries to promote a false ideology, all of a sudden, oh, they're allowed to say that. But the moment someone wants to put Jesus Christ on one of their pieces of equipment, all of a sudden, that's against the rules. Now, throughout the ceremony, there were numerous symbols that raised eyebrows, everything from occult imagery to references that align with pagan rituals. And by the way, my Olympic documentary is coming out soon, and that will expose a lot of this in far more depth with evidence to back it up. And uh, yeah, not only is this disturbing that they continually come against Jesus Christ and anybody speaking about him, but they will openly display decapitated angels, pagan mythology, and they will say that's fine to promote. And uh, let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. But for now, let's take a look at some tweets from the general public and see what they have to say about this closing ceremony and the Olympics in general. Let's take a look. Okay, so this user here, Cab, says the 2024 Olympics closing ceremony was obviously a homage to Lucifer, the sun god. They can say it means whatever they want, but I see demonic entities entering an astral portal during a ritual. It's all front and center because they know their time is almost up. Now, this is a fact. This is a 100% fact. The enemy's time is running short. And how can anybody look at this and think this is something holy? This is something righteous. This is something beautiful. Nobody would think that unless they are delusional, literally delusional. And yeah, you can see it for yourself right here. Here's the being that Cab is saying is Lucifer. And here is the symbolism. Very, very obvious symbolism. For anybody who knows anything about the occult, anything about paganism, you will know that what is taking place here is not holy. It is not righteous. This is wickedness. And anybody who's trying to make excuses for this, you are part of the problem. That's what you need to realize very quickly, that you are part of the problem. And for anybody here who is awake, hearing the sound of my voice, when you go and explain this to people and they just dismiss it, they are part of the problem. They are literally the people who are afraid to speak up or too cowardly to speak up, or they just don't even care. They are so selfish and so self-centered in their own lives that they don't really care about exposing what is taking place here. As the scripture tells us to do, expose the works of darkness. They would rather just get on with their own life because they don't want to step on anybody's toes. Even though the devil is continually stepping on theirs, they just don't realize it yet. 
This user libs of TikTok says closing ceremony of the Olympics. WTF is this. I mean, that's how they decided to express witnessing this insanity. Then we have this tweet here from Carolan. She says the Olympics closing ceremony features a headless and armless angel with what appears to be an effigy of Lucifer, the golden voyager standing in gold, certainly a fitting close to the most demonic and satanic Olympics in history. I mean, that's a good point. I mean, that's also a very good point that she brought up here as well, saying that the arms are also missing. Yeah. So not only is the connection to divinity severed, but the arm, which is the action, the deliverance is also severed. Uh, yeah, it's a good, good, good observation there. So yeah, this is absolute wickedness. It looks completely evil. Honestly, how does anybody condone this foolishness? Absolutely insane. I have this lady here, Liz Churchill. She says the Olympics closing ceremony looks like a celebration of Satanism and demonic forces. What do you think? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm genuinely intrigued about what everybody thinks about this because I can come here and I can present the facts that I've studied for years and I can show you this is this, this is that, which I do in my educational series. But at the end of the day, I'm still interested in what everybody has to say. Some people come out with the most amazing input in the comment section. They sound like scholars. You know, other people, they just leave the most ridiculous, foolish comments. But, you know, that's what the internet's for, right? For everybody to share their opinions and for people to connect, mankind to connect. At least that's what I think is the most useful use of the internet, other than obviously preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is what I do here on this channel very frequently. Whether you're a Christian or not, you're welcome here on this channel, though, because this is a source of truth. Glory to Yahweh, who is in me. OK, let's take a look at this tweet, because this tweet here looks quite interesting. Let's take a look at what they're saying. Nikki says, closing ceremony, Olympics 2024, returning to the gods of old, opening the portal. While it's easy to dismiss this as satanic, look a bit closer. We are seeing push to for the return of the fallen ones. The promise that we can be like the gods, pushed by those like Harari and many others, Jupiter, Saturn rising. The honored bull with eyes glowing is all connected. I'm sure Secret Sunblog will have a breakdown soon. What's Secret Sunblog? I'm guessing this is a guy who talks about these kind of things. I haven't actually checked his channel before. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting tweets, actually. Maybe I will check this guy's tweets out at another time. OK, anyways, back to this one. So what is going on here? Jupiter. Wow. 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 OK. OK, she really did catch on to something here. This is the symbolism for Jupiter. And let me find out exactly what type of symbolism this is. Take a quick screenshot of this. Where did this originate from? I'm actually intrigued. And this is actually pretty strange, to be honest. This is the symbol for the planet Jupiter. And I've actually not come across this specific symbol before. I haven't really studied what Jupiter represents or anything along those lines to the occultists. We know the occultists, they've fallen into worshipping the creation rather than the creator, as the scripture says they would do. So they worship the planets, the stars and these kind of foolish things. But let's take a look at what they actually believe about this. It looks as if it's the number 24 also. Very similar to the number 24. See it. But uh, what does it represent exactly? I remember this has something to do with Zeus. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, here we go. Jupiter Zeus, classic major planet. Now, I think it has something to do with the letter. That's why it's related to Zeus. I mean, we can go deeper into this study if everybody's interested in it. Here we go. So what do the occultists say about Jupiter? They say it is the moon. Remember the previous live stream that we did where I showed you all of the occultists. They have moon symbolism in their religious quote unquote symbolism. Remember that. They either have it tilted to the side or they have the moon and the star or they have a moon upside down or they'll have it on their forehead with a dot. They always have the moon incorporated into their paganism and they try to hide it behind quote unquote monotheistic religion, which it isn't. It's, it's occultism. Then we have it combined with the earth to create this. OK, so that's what it is. It's the moon and the earth, which they call wisdom, knowledge and justice. So that's what they're trying to push here is quote unquote wisdom, knowledge and justice. Now that we've come to that conclusion, we can understand very clearly that the wisdom is the wisdom of man. The knowledge is the knowledge of the fallen ones, which they are presenting before mankind. And what was the final thing? Justice. Well, it's going to be unrighteousness. Remember, it says that Yahweh will hand them over. The children of disobedience will be handed over to their own desires. They claim that they are righteous, but there is none righteous, no, not one. They're in rebellion to the truth. They reject the truth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is the way, the truth and the life. And they try to place man in positions of gods. And that's what's taking place here very, very clearly. <laughs> I have no idea what this is going on here, but this just looks absolutely insane. 
What is this? Somebody posted this. They said, Nike winged victory of Samo Thrace. More headlessness. As I alluded to in the video for the eclipse last fall, October 2023, I knew decapitation would be a theme this summer, but had no clue how. Okay, very interesting. Very interesting. So yeah, I, I did hear that they were claiming this was about Nike, their fallen one which is actually what that big shoe brand is named after. Insane, right? Absolute insanity. Well, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, do hit that thumbs up button, like, and subscribe for more content like this. I greatly appreciate every one of you. And we can dive into these concepts a lot deeper in my educational series. If you have any videos you want me to do deep dive documentaries on, definitely let me know about that in the comment section below. And if you're not already following me on Twitter, my Twitter is Saint AVS, now known as X. I love you so much, family. May the most high Yah shine his face upon you always and give you peace. And I'll see you on the next one. Shalom, shalom.